Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FrenchPod101.com. Hi, welcome to Introduction to French. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by. Hi, everyone, I'm Candice. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of French grammar. In some languages, like French, nouns are divided into different classes. For example, French divides nouns into two classes using gender, masculine and feminine. Let's take a look at some masculine nouns. Lit, fromage, village, livre. Now, feminine nouns. Cuillère, boue, revue, syllabe. There are some rules for learning the gender of French nouns, but they're quite complex. Many consider the designation of gender to be largely arbitrary, so it's likely that you'll just have to memorize them. Okay, so now you know that nouns are divided into gender classes, but why is this important? Learning gender nouns is important for forming sentences in French. For example, li means bed in French, and it's a masculine noun. If you want to refer to the bed in a sentence, however, you need to add le before the noun. Le lit. In fact, if you want to refer to any masculine noun in French, you need to use le or un. Le fromage. Le village. Un livre. On the other hand, we use la and une to refer to feminine nouns. La cuillère. La boue. Une revue, une syllabe. Now you know how to refer to nouns in French. Similar to nouns, French verbs can also be separated into different classes. There are three classes of verbs in French, and they are verbs ending in E. Manger, nager, travailler, aimer. Verbs ending in IR, finir, ralentir, Réagir. And verbs ending in re, war, and ir, mourir, recevoir, lire. Each class of verbs will be conjugated differently when used in a sentence. Let's take a look at a few examples to see how they differ. To swim is nager in French, and it comes from the first group because it ends in e. I swim in the present tense would be je nage. Past tense would be Je nageais. And the future tense would be Je nagerai. Let's compare that to a verb in group two. To finish is finir in French, and it comes from the second group because it ends in ir. Je finis. Je finissais. Je finirai. Finally, a verb from group three. To read is lire in French. And it comes from the third group because it ends with re. Je lis, je lisais, je lirai. We'll teach you how to properly conjugate verbs of different classes in future lessons. For now, just know that there are three different categories of verbs in French. Okay, now you know about nouns and verbs in French. Let's learn how to form basic sentences in French. Forming sentences in French is quite simple, especially for English speakers, as French uses the same word order as English. Consider the following example. Le garçon mange un gâteau. In English, this sentence means, the boy eats a cake. If we break down the French sentence, we can see that the order matches the English sentence one-to-one. -one. Le, de, garçon, Boy, mange, eats, un, e, gâteau, cake. We can create basic sentences in French simply by exchanging English words for French words. Notice how we use un here, because gâteau is a masculine noun. If the object had been a feminine noun, we'd have used une instead. We can create any basic sentence in French by starting with a subject, in this case, the boy. 
le garçon. Then follow it with a verb, eats, mange. And finally, end with the object, the cake. Un gâteau. As you can see, the word order in French is just like English. Finally, let's learn how to create negative sentences in French. Negating sentences in French is simple. Simply add ne before the verb and pas after it. J'ai. Je n'ai pas. J'aime lire. Je n'aime pas lire. Juliette mange. Juliette ne mange pas. You can negate any basic sentence in French this way. Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that French nouns are divided into two classes, masculine and feminine. Similar to nouns, French verbs are divided into three groups. French uses the same subject, verb, object, word order like English. And finally, you learned how to negate sentences in French. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the main differences between written and spoken French? Written French and spoken French can seem completely different. A lot of grammar is relaxed in spoken French, so sometimes you might have trouble recognizing a phrase even if you already know it. For instance, abbreviations are extremely common in spoken French. It goes beyond dropping the E of je in front of voyeurs such as j'ai, which is I have, or l'année, which is the year. Among the most common spoken abbreviation is te for tu es, which means you are. So instead of tu es joli for you cute, you hear t'es joli. Similarly, tu as, you have, is often shortened to ta. Another common omission is the ne in negative sentences. In writing, the correct way to say I have no money is je n'ai pas d'argent. In casual spoken French, you can just say j'ai pas d'argent. Here's another example. Ce n'est pas grave means no problem, or it's not a big deal. Spoken, we usually say, c'est pas grave. When people talk quickly, it can even sound like c'est pas grave. So you might not even hear the C. One more example is je ne peux pas, meaning I can't, can become je peux pas. But we can make it shorter and more casual by dropping the E, je peux pas. Some grammatical structures are more common in spoken French too. For instance, questions are usually shorter and more direct. Instead of saying the full qu'est-ce que tu as fait for what did you do, you probably hear t'as fait quoi, which literally translates to you did what? Another common spoken sentence structure is adding a pronoun at the beginning for emphasis. For example, if you want to emphasize your personal opinion, you could say, moi je pense, literally, that means me, I think. In English, it's something like, as for me. Here's another example. If you're talking about your family's plans for the weekend, you can add nous for emphasis. Nous, nous allons à la plage. Us or us for us. We're going to the beach. There we go. I hope that clears things up. In another lesson, we'll go over le verlan, which is a form of French spoken slang. If you have other questions, please leave them in the comments and I try to answer them. A bientôt. See you soon. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, while I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what are some French business expressions? Many French business expressions can also be used in casual settings, 
So it's good to know these standard phrases so you can communicate in both types of situations. In this lesson, we will go over some basic business expressions that you can use in French. Je m'excuse du retard, which means I am sorry for being late. It's a very useful phrase. You can use this for whatever reason. You can manage to be on time for a meeting or just come in late to the office. You can also say désolé pour le retard which means the same thing, but it's a little more casual. If you ask to write a report and want to know when it's due, you can ask « Quand dois-je rendre le rapport ?» which literally means « When should I give the report ?» If you are a little busy at work and want to let your co-workers know, you can use this phrase « Je suis en train d'organiser un rendez-vous ». Être en train de means « to be in the middle of something. So the example, je suis en train d'organiser un rendez-vous, means I'm in the middle of organizing a meeting. Se rendre compte is another great idiom to use in business. It literally means realize or be aware. Let's go over how to use it. For example, if your team has a lot of work to do, but you will be out of town the next week. You can say, rendez-vous compte que je suis en vacances la semaine prochaine, which means, take into consideration that I'm on vacation next week. If your boss needs something urgently and you have just finished your work, you can use the phrase venir de, which literally means to come from. It's also an expression that means just now. If you want to say, I just finished my project, you can say, je viens de finir mon projet. When everything is finished, you can use the phrase, c'est un plaisir de collaborer avec vous, which means, it's a pleasure doing business with you. You can also use travailler, which means work, instead of collaborer. With travailler, the phrase would be, c'est un plaisir de travailler avec vous, which means, it's a pleasure working with you. And that's it. I hope these phrases can come in handy for you. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments and I try to answer them. A bientôt. See you soon. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what are some popular French idioms? In English, we have our fair share of idioms like it's raining cats and dogs or even what's up. They might not make much sense literally, but they are commonly used in everyday conversation. French, of course, has them too. And here are some examples. Faire la tête means to sulk, but its literal translation is actually to do the head. It's used when someone isn't happy about something and in a bad mood. For example, elle a fait la tête toute la journée. She sulked all day. We also have coup de foudre, which literally means a strike of lightning. But as an idiom, it means love at first sight. Pretty fitting, actually. Sa marche is one you'll come across every day. Marcher means to walk, but ça marche means that works. English speakers might recognize this following one. Il fait un temps de chien, literally. It's a dog weather. It means, as you might have guessed, it's terrible weather. Here's a funny one. Arriver comme un cheveu sur la soupe. It literally means to arrive like a hair in the soup. This is about entering a situation at the worst possible moment. It can also mean arriving suddenly, by chance. Another idiom that uses food is mettre son grain de sel, literally, to put one's grain of salt. It's an idiom that means to give an unnecessary opinion. Donner sa langue au chat, literally, means to give one's tongue to the cat but it actually means to give up. 
For example, if someone asks you to guess something and you have no idea what the answer is. Another one that doesn't make much sense, but you'll often hear is faire la grasse matinée, which literally means to do a fat morning. But people use it to say they slept in. Ça coûte les yeux de la tête, which means it's ridiculously expensive, but literally means it costs the eyes out of the head. There you go, try them out. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I try to answer them. A bientôt, see you soon. Salut, je m'appelle Ingrid. Hi everybody, I'm Ingrid. Welcome to FrenchPod101.com, le français en 3 minutes. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn French. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying merci. In this lesson, we'll learn some of the other most common greetings used in France. Vous êtes prêts? Are you ready? Alors, c'est parti. Let's start. The most used informal greeting is salut. Salut. Salut means hi, hello or goodbye. We use it when we meet but also when we leave. We should only use this greeting with friends and family. And now, let's continue by discussing the formal way to greet people. The one you are probably used to hearing is Bonjour. Bonjour. Literally, bonjour means good day. However, we may also interpret it as good morning or good afternoon. As a rule of thumb, we can use bonjour only during the daytime, from morning until evening. During the evening, we say bonsoir. Bonsoir. Soir is French for evening, so bonsoir means good evening. Bonjour and bonsoir are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. In this formal situation, French people use au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir means goodbye. Finally, in French, we have an expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. A bientôt. A bientôt. Now, you can greet people in many different ways in French. Let's review them all again. When meeting someone informally, we say salut. When meeting someone formally, we say bonjour or bonsoir. When living in a formal situation, au revoir. When living, no matter whether it's formal or informal situation, à bientôt. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Ingrid's insights. In formal situations, French people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are really friend with, we kiss each other on both cheeks. Don't be afraid to do it with your French friends, it's normal. During the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase Parlez-vous anglais? Do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Le Français en 3 minutes lesson. A bientôt! Welcome back to Top Words, and this week will be about Top 15 questions you should know. So if you travel in France, pay attention to those. Aimes-tu la cuisine française? Do you like French food? So if you are invited somewhere, usually people ask this question. Aimes-tu la cuisine française? Do you like French food? Oh, aimes-tu la cuisine française? Yeah, sure, I love it. <laughs> So, do you like French food? C'est quand votre anniversaire? When is your birthday? Quand est ton anniversaire? If you want to be a bit casual. Ou quand est ton anniversaire? When is your birthday? Combien de temps as-tu appris le français? How long have you been studying French? Combien de temps as-tu appris le français? Or, pendant combien de temps as-tu appris le français? Usually we say pendant combien de temps. I'm sorry if I speak really fast, but French people usually speak really fast. For three months. Wow, you're good. <laughs> Comment t'appelles-tu? What's your name? You will hear this one a lot. So, Comment t'appelles-tu? Or more casually will be Comment tu t'appelles? Comment vas-tu? How are you? Comment vas-tu? How are you? Hey, bonjour. Comment vas-tu? Or you will often hear Comment ça va? Hey, comment ça va? D'où venez-vous? Where are you from? D'où venez-vous? Where do you come from? 
and just answer where you come from. I'm from America. <laughs> French people often make jokes about English speaking people, so prove them wrong by answering in French and you will impress them really much. That would be so great. <laughs> so try it. Es-tu déjà allé en France? Have you been to France? Well, aller is go. So if you are already in France when answering this, it would be Es-tu déjà venu en France? Which is Did you ever come to France? With a notion of Did you ever come before? Or is it your first time? Maybe you will also hear this one Is it your first time in France? Ou Est-ce que c'est ta première fois en France? Où as-tu appris le français? Where did you learn French? Où as-tu appris le français? Where did you learn French? On French Pod 101 <laughs> With me! Yeah, where did you learn French? Leave me a comment below. Maybe in your home country or on the internet or did you study it more seriously in school? So just tell me. Où habitez-vous? Where do you live? I used to live in the south. So between Spain and Italy. It was a nice place full of sun and everything. You should check it out. So come to the south of France. It's sunny. Où sont les toilettes? Where is the bathroom? Où sont les toilettes? You will need this one in a restaurant. Toilette is a plural word in French. We used to make a joke that French toilets are so dirty that you have to check many of them before finding a decent one. That's why it's a plural name. Some toilets you have to pay to access them actually in public places. So be careful. Sometimes you need a coin, especially in stations like train stations. Où travaillez-vous? Where do you work? Où travaillez-vous? Where do you work? I work on the internet. It's a worldwide place. So, and after this one, usually you will be asked, what do you work in? Or what's your job? Quel est ton travail? Ou dans quoi travailles-tu? Here you go. Qu'avez-vous dit? What did you say? Qu'avez-vous dit? Or you will often hear, pardon? Or excuse me? Like, I'm sorry, like I didn't catch you. So, pardon, excusez-moi. Or, can you repeat? Pouvez-vous répéter? So, if French people say that to you, just try and repeating what you said. Qu'est-ce que c'est? What is this? <gasps> Qu'est-ce que c'est? I don't know. Show them something fancy for your own country and tell them. And they will ask, oh, qu'est-ce que c'est? Quel est ton numéro de téléphone? What's your phone number? Quel est ton numéro de téléphone? What's your phone number? This is a pickup line. Hey, Ooh. what's your phone number? Quel est ton numéro de téléphone? Ah, oh, yeah, maybe they will ask for your pseudo, which is your ID in any web messaging service. Es-tu célibataire? Are you single? And if you are traveling to France and happen to find love, maybe you will be asked, are you single? Es-tu célibataire? Or maybe the other sneaky way around. Est-ce que tu as un copain? Ou est-ce que tu as une copine? Do you have a boyfriend or do you have a girlfriend? So, maybe you will find French love in France. Who knows? And it's the end for this week. Don't forget to subscribe for more and don't forget to check the website if you want to know more about French. And see you next time. A bientôt. Oh. Oh. Ah. Quoi? Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. So welcome back, watchers. This week we're going to be talking about 10 phrases you always want to hear. This will be nice. So what do you want to hear? You're so pretty. Il y aura un bonus à la fin du mois. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. Ah, this will be so nice. So sad it's not true. <laughs> yeah, if your boss tells you this. The, il y aura un bonus à la fin du mois. Then you get extra money, isn't it nice? If I had the bonus, I would not come to work anymore and go traveling somewhere. Le budget est illimité. The budget is unlimited. This also sounds nice. Like if you put me in a store with le budget est illimité. I would buy lots of and lots of food. And drinks too. Allons au restaurant avec un budget illimité. Let's go to the restaurant with an unlimited budget. Prenez une pause. Je vais faire le ménage aujourd'hui. Take a break. I do the cleaning today. 
So this is also the polite version. So if you want to talk more casually, is prends une pause. Je vais faire le ménage aujourd'hui. Prends une pause. I'm doing the dishes and the cleaning, everything. Just sit down and enjoy. This would be nice. Yeah, this is also something I want to hear. Et vous gagnez. And you win. Et vous gagnez. And you win. Yeah. What do I win? Et vous gagnez un voyage en Amérique. And you win a trip to the USA. Ooh, ooh. From East Coast to West Coast, starting with New York and going to Chicago and maybe visit some friend in the South and then go all the way to California and then be Las Vegas, back to California and from California, take a plane ticket to Japan. Tu me manques. I miss you. Oh, tu m'as manqué. I missed you. And now you reunite and you are happy together. Vous avez fait un excellent travail. You did a great job. Hey, great job today, Lilia. Thank you. So if you manage to learn all those French sentences, vous avez fait un excellent travail. Vous aviez raison. You were right. I told you so. If someone recognizes that you were right and tell you so, that's nice. Vous êtes un excellent cuisinier. You're an excellent cook. Tu es un excellent cuisinier. This is one I often get. So do you get this comment? Vous êtes un excellent cuisinier. If so, what did you cook to get that comment? Leave it in the comment. Tu es jolie. You're pretty. Oh, you look so pretty today. Oh, tu as l'air très jolie aujourd'hui. Only today? Je vous ai apporté quelque chose de spécial. I brought you something special. What could be quelque chose de spécial? I would like to be given a kitten. They are cute. So, vous avez fait un excellent travail aujourd'hui. So, you did a great job today. And see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to learn more friends. Welcome back, watchers. Uh -huh, bye. So, welcome back, watchers. This week, we're going to talk about must know expressions for agreeing and disagreeing. Are you ready? C'est vrai, that's true. Yeah, this is just a simple answer for when something is true. C'est vrai can also be a question if um, you want to confirm that someone said something or you are really surprised. C'est vrai? Like, oh, really? Yeah, or we just say it casually. Ah, c'est vrai. Or, ah, did you notice the sky was blue today? Oh, tu as remarqué que le ciel était bleu aujourd'hui? Ah, c'est vrai. Oh, that's true. Uh -huh. <laughs> Je crois que oui. I guess so. Do you think the concert is going to be at 8 p.m. today? Yeah, I think so. Tu crois que le concert est à 8 heures ce soir? Ah, je crois que oui. So this is not a 100% sure answer, so you still have to check it. But you are 75 to 80% sure it's true. Absolument, absolutely. That's when you are 100% convinced it's true. Or right, or what you're saying. I think we should go with the blue color for the marketing campaign. Absolutely! Je crois que nous devrions choisir le bleu pour la campagne marketing. Absolument. And not the filthy yellow. It's also a really formal and polite manner to say yes. For example, if you're in a fancy hotel and you say, Oh, is the bar on the first floor? And you say, Absolument. Absolutely. Qu'en pensez-vous? What do you think? What do you think about this week's lesson? Leave a comment. Que pensez-vous de la leçon de cette semaine? Laissez-moi un commentaire. What do you think about the food here? Que pensez-vous de la nourriture ici? I think it's really good. Yeah, it's totally cool. Peut-être, maybe. Do you think you will be able to come tonight? Maybe. Est-ce que tu penses que tu pourras venir ce soir? Peut-être. That's 50-50 level of sureness. Je ne pense pas. I don't think so. Do you think you can finish this task before the day is over? I don't think so. Tu penses que tu pourras finir ce travail avant que la journée soit finie Je ne pense pas. Bien sûr, of course. Can I have fries with my chicken Of course. Est-ce que je peux avoir des frites avec mon poulet Bien sûr. Yes. Oh, mom, can I go out Maman, est-ce que je peux sortir Bien sûr, of course. Just be careful and call mommy when you arrive. J'allais le dire. I was just going to say that. Or sometimes we use... Uh, Tu l'as dit, which is, oh yeah, you right, you said so. Uh-huh, 
Oh my God, have you seen Betty new hair color? It's terrible. J'allais le dire. I was just about to say that. Je crains d'être en désaccord. I'm afraid I disagree. That's racist, you twat. Je n'aime pas la musique pop. Je crains d'être en désaccord. I don't like pop music. I'm afraid I disagree. Hey, what kind of music do you like, guys? Leave a comment. Aucun doute là-dessus. No doubt about it. Here you are 120% sure. It's true. So use it when you are only really sure. This episode of Weekly Word is going to be awesome. No doubt about it. Cet épisode de French Weekly Words va être super bien. Aucun doute là-dessus. Il va signer le contrat. Aucun doute là-dessus. He is going to sign the contract. No doubt about it. So that's about it for this week. Don't forget to check the website frenchpod101.com for more French lessons. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. 
click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. Tu viens au centre Georges Pompidou Le centre Georges Pompidou Qu'est-ce que c'est C'est un musée d'art moderne. Et Georges Pompidou Qui c'est Oh là là, c'est un président français. Vous êtes étudiant Pardon Ah oui Vous êtes étudiant à l'université Oui. Et vous, qu'est-ce que vous faites Je suis comédienne. Du cinéma Non, de théâtre. Je vous... Chut Regarde le film. Moi, Jeanne. Toi, Tarzan. Hein Moi, Jeanne. Toi, Tarzan. Tu comprends le français Euh, pardon Je ne comprends pas. Tu comprends le français Lentement, s'il te plaît. Tu comprends le français Ah oui, un peu. Tu habites à Paris Oui, j'habite à Belleville. Et toi Non, je n'habite pas à Paris. Tu habites où À Toulouse. D'où tu es Moi, je suis de Klein Frankenheim. Klein Frankenstein Tu es allemand C'est Klein Frankenheim. Non, je suis français. Une femme regarde des vêtements dans une boutique. Que va-t-elle acheter J'aime les deux, la jupe bleue et la jupe blanche. Oui, la jupe blanche se vend très bien. La bleue est un peu chère. Oui, c'est vrai, mais elle vous va. Hmm, je n'ai pas les moyens pour les deux. Je vais acheter la blanche. Ok, merci beaucoup. Que va-t-elle acheter Une femme regarde des vêtements dans une boutique. Que va-t-elle acheter J'aime les deux, la jupe bleue et la jupe blanche. Oui, la jupe blanche se vend très bien. La bleue est un peu chère. Oui, c'est vrai, mais elle vous va. Hmm, je n'ai pas les moyens pour les deux. Je vais acheter la blanche. Ok, merci beaucoup. Un homme et une femme discutent. Combien de personnes au total vont venir à la fête La fête va avoir lieu demain. Qui vient à la fête Nous deux, deux de mes amis et le professeur. Ça fait donc cinq. Oh Et le professeur vient avec sa femme. Très bien Combien de personnes au total vont venir à la fête Un homme et une femme discutent. Combien de personnes au total vont venir à la fête La fête va avoir lieu demain. Qui vient à la fête Nous deux, deux de mes amis et le professeur. Ça fait donc cinq. Oh Et le professeur vient avec sa femme. Très bien. Une femme a acheté un lit. Où va-t-elle le mettre Le lit est grand. Oui, je ne peux pas le mettre vers la porte. Mettons-le au fond de la chambre. Est-ce mieux de le mettre au milieu Non, mettons-le dans le coin. Ok, ça sonne bien. Tu peux m'aider à le soulever Où va-t-elle le mettre Une femme a acheté un lit. Où va-t-elle le mettre Le lit est grand. Oui, je ne peux pas le mettre vers la porte. Mettons-le au fond de la chambre. Est-ce mieux de le mettre au milieu Non. Mettons-le dans le coin. Ok, ça sonne bien. Tu peux m'aider à le soulever Un professeur parle à ses étudiants. Qu'est-ce que les étudiants vont apporter Demain, nous irons au musée. Apporter un stylo, un cahier et quelque chose à boire. Nous déjeunerons 
au restaurant du musée, donc vous n'avez pas besoin d'emmener de sandwich. Et un parapluie Il va peut-être pleuvoir. Apportez-en un, s'il vous plaît. Ok. Qu'est-ce que les étudiants vont apporter Un professeur parle à ses étudiants. Qu'est-ce que les étudiants vont apporter Demain, nous irons au musée. Apportez un stylo, un cahier et quelque chose à boire. Nous déjeunerons au restaurant du musée, donc vous n'avez pas besoin d'emmener de sandwich. Et un parapluie Il va peut-être pleuvoir. Apportez-en un, s'il vous plaît. Ok. Un homme et une femme parlent. Quand vont-ils se faire masser Mon ami vient d'ouvrir un nouveau salon de massage. Un salon de massage Je veux y aller. Tu as du temps samedi Samedi, je suis occupé. Et dimanche C'est fermé le dimanche. Vendredi alors Ok. Quand vont-ils se faire masser Un homme et une femme parlent. Quand vont-ils se faire masser Mon ami vient d'ouvrir un nouveau salon de massage. Un salon de massage Je veux y aller. Tu as du temps samedi Samedi, je suis occupé. Et dimanche C'est fermé le dimanche. Vendredi alors Ok. The top 15 words chosen by fans. So you choose words and let's talk about them. What did you choose? Let's see. Super. Awesome. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Vous êtes super. So awesome. Trop super. It's awesome. C'est super. I'm awesome. Je suis super. What's awesome to you? Leave a comment. À bientôt. See you soon. Yeah, it already ended. See you soon. No, it's not. Okay, whatever. So, à bientôt is just see you soon, and you can say it when leaving your friends. Ah, à bientôt. Anytime you would use see you soon in English, same way. Aimé, love. Kyung, kyung, little heart with tiny horns. I should do it like that. <laughs> I love you. Je t'aime. Do you know I'm shy? To love someone. Aimé quelqu'un. Do you love someone? I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hide in here. I love platypuses. J'aime les ornithorynques. They are so random, right? You like random animals. <laughs> I love them too. Le pain. Bread. French people love their bread. J'aime le pain. I like bread. To cut slices of bread and put ham and cheese on top. Couper des tranches de pain et mettre du jambon et du fromage dessus. Ham and cheese bread slices, yummies, with butter in between. Bien sûr, mon petit chou. Of course, my little sweetheart. This is making me shy again. My cheeks are all red. It's not because I'm sunburned or anything. Petit chou is actually my little cauliflower. <laughs> Isn't it so cute and smelly? If the wife asks the husband, Oh, can you buy me a new car? And the husband be like, Of course, my little sweetheart. Bien sûr, mon petit chou. Bonjour. Hello. Or hi. You say it usually in the morning. Or any time of the day is actually fine. Bonjour, comment ça va? Hello, how are you? Ça va. It's okay. You can say, bonjour, comment ça va? Hello, how are you doing? Ah, ça va. Or ça va bien. Ah, I'm okay. Or it's okay. I'm fine. Sourire. Smile. I like your smile. J'aime ton sourire. Some guy once say to me, your smile looks so sincere. Ton sourire a l'air tellement authentique. Ah, cheesy. So cheesy. Where is the smile? Show me that smile. Oui, il est le sourire. Montre-moi ton sourire. We say that to little kids when taking a picture. <laughs> Français. French. You guys use French as one of your favorite words. Of course it is, or else you wouldn't be learning it. Je suis française. I'm French. Ou parler français. To speak French. Le français, c'est chouette. French is nice. Hmm. Intéressant. Interesting. This sounds really interesting. 
Ça a l'air très intéressant. Like me. <rire> French is interesting. Le français est intéressant. Or else you wouldn't be learning it, right? Whatever. Maintenant, now. I wanna rock right now. I wanna, I wanna rock right now. Je veux du rock maintenant. Je veux, je veux du rock maintenant. I want it now. Je le veux maintenant. Let's do it now. Faisons-le maintenant. Désolé. Sorry. Ah, I'm sorry. Ah, je suis désolé. Like, you made a mistake and be like, ah, désolé. For example, when you bump into someone in the street or in the train, you can say, ah, pardon, instead of désolé. Désolé is more serious, like if you make a mistake, and désolé is more sense of regret. Je suis désolé. I'm sorry. Merci. Thanks. Uh, merci, thanks, is more casual than merci beaucoup. So, oh, can you give me the salt? Oh, here. Oh, thanks. Ah, oh, merci. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. When someone was very kind to you, you can add uh, beaucoup at the end of merci, which is merci beaucoup, which is deeper level of thankfulness than just merci. So, merci beaucoup is kind of respectful and thanks a lot. Really a lot. Merci beaucoup de continuer à regarder mes vidéos. Thank you very much for still watching the videos. <laughs> souffler. You guys like food, hein? I like food too. So souffler is a souffler with English accent. And the souffler is all puffy. Le souffler est tout gonflé. Looks so yummy, you want to put your face in. And then it gets all flat and it's depressing and everyone cries again. We don't want it flat, we want it puffy. <laughs> Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.